You can sit when you do it. Okay. State recognized presence of the jury? We do, Your Honor. Defense? All right. Mr. Williams, you may. I forgot where we were when we left. I remember. It's okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, Ms. Sliman, good. A couple more questions about the diagram I showed you. Okay. Up at the top, it pretty clearly says not to scale. Yes? That's correct. My understanding is that means you're not saying that this represents the exact number of feet or distance from the Walmart entrance to anything else. That's correct. Would you agree, though, however, that the relative location of the shell casings to one another is accurate? That's yes. Okay. Any objection? No objection. All right. This will be admitted without objection as State's Exhibit Number Thirty One. So, what do you say, Ms. Livingood? Would you like to come down and look at the exhibit? Governor, may I ever come down? Yes. And we'll Thank give her you. a microphone, please, so everyone can hear. You're going to need to grab one of those handheld microphones. Now, if you don't mind, actually, let's move a little closer over here. And I'm going to ask you, ma'am, to stand over here so that all the members of the jury can see the board. It's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts. Stand right where I am, if you may. So this <clears throat> button right here has a green pointer on it, OK? So if you could use the diagram and first tell us which markers are start, please, with the 9 millimeter, which I believe you said were consistent with Lieutenant Clayton's firearm. Is that right? That's correct. Right. So could you tell us the letters that, were, that represent casings that were recovered that were 9 millimeter, please? B and C are going to be your 9 millimeter. D, E, G. Oh. It's on there. If you need to get closer, that's fine. That's right. D, E, G, H, I, there's I, and K are 9 millimeters. Would you agree that all of the letters you just described are in and around the area of where Lieutenant Clayton's body came, or where you found evidence of where her body came to rest? Yes. Now, let's go back to markers A, O, and R, which indicates when 40 S and W. What does that mean, when 40 S and W? They're the, actually, they're called the Winchester, but they doesn't fit on the actual casing itself, the head stamp. So it's marked as win. And then it's the 40, it's a 40 cal and it's S and W, Smith and Wesson. All right, now can you circle A, O, and R, please? There's A, there's O, and then there's R. And I think you misspoke. I think K is a 40 caliber. Is that right? No, it's a nine. Right there, it says oh, K. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, now, will a 40 caliber cartridge fire in a 9 millimeter firearm? No. So are you comfortable in saying that A, the cartridge casings from A, O, and R were not fired in Lieutenant Clayton's firearm? That's correct. So then, underneath, it says markers F, L, M, and N. RP40 S and W. So start with what is RP40 S and W stand? That's the manufacturer. That's the RP, just like with Win. Um, and then you're going to have 40 Cal and Smith and Wesson. Right. And where can you circle F, L, M, and N? There's F, L, M, N. 
Okay? And then there's one marker J that says perfecta 40 S and W. One more time, perfecta 40 S and W, what does it mean? Well, your perfecta is going to be the manufacturer, the brand that's on the head stamp, and then you're going to have 40 and then Smith and W, Smith and Wesson. And where is J on the diagram? J is right here. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I'll trade you the laser pointer. You take the mic. I'll take this, and you go back there. Thank you. Now, do you recall approximately how long you worked on that, that morning at the Walmart scene? At the Walmart scene, I was there around three hours-ish. And where did you go after completing your tasks at the Walmart scene that morning of January 9th? Once the evidence was all collected, <clears throat> excuse me, I responded down to 48 Zero 01 North Pine Hills Road. And is that an apartment complex there? That is an apartment complex. Why did you go to 4801 North Pine Hills Road? That was where an Orange County um, officer or captain, I think it was, ha was behind the brown, I can't remember the brand of it, but there was a brown, um, vehicle that I was told the suspect left, had been driving. All right. What time did you leave the Walmart scene? About quarter of 11-ish, give and or take. What did you observe when you arrived at the apartment complex scene on Pine Hills Road? It was also uh, roped off or crime scene tape around. Just like you had at the Walmart scene, did you begin by or early in your investigation take photographs? Yes. And did you place evidence markers out where you found what you believe to be relevant or important evidence? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach with what's been marked as State's Exhibit AD Alpha Delta and shown to counsel. You may. It's a composite exhibit of 10 photographs. Ms. Livengood, could you please look at the 10 photographs in AD and tell me when you've had a chance to do that? Do you recognize the images depicted in composite AD? Yes. And what do you recognize them to be generally? These are my photographs that I took at that second location. Do they fairly and accurately depict what you observed at the Royal Oaks Apartments on North Pine Hills Road on January 9th of 2017? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, we'd ask court to admit state's exhibit AD as 32, I believe. Any objection? All right, this will be admitted without objection as state's exhibit, composite exhibit number 32, consisting of 10 sequentially numbered photographs. Permission to publish states 32, Your Honor? Granted. All right, so can you see this, the photographs on the screen, ma'am? Yes. What are we looking at in photograph one of states 32? Uh, in this particular case, it's going to show the crime scene tape that had been marked and also um, a cone, one of the cones. And can you see it? Well, I'll just go to the next photograph. Photograph two. It's a cone AA. And do you recall what was recovered from cone AA? A uh, smushed up projectile. Okay. Like you had at the Walmart scene, did you collect the projectile after photographing it? Yes. Photograph number three. What are we looking at there? This is going to be cone AB. And at the top of the photograph, can you see the suspect vehicle? Yes. Uh, trunk is open? Yes. And photograph four, what is that a depiction of? This is going to be cone AB, and it's going to show also another type of, uh, another projectile that's got some damage to it. 
Were you able to determine what those next to the projectile to the right, those little pieces of plastic were? I didn't at the time, no. Have you since? No. Okay, just making sure. Number five, what are we this, looking at there? This is gonna show the suspect vehicle. Um, it is gonna show the trunk open and you can see there's a partially open right front passenger door. Photograph six. It's showing the front. We do overalls around the vehicle. And this is gonna show the front of the vehicle. And it's gonna show another cone, cone AD, where an ev some evidence was located. That's gonna, be, seven. that's gonna be a projectile. Photograph eight. This is gonna be cone AC. And it's, it's located a couple of feet away from the left rear bumper, you'd say, of the suspect's car. And it's going to be a spent casing. That's photograph nine. That's photograph nine. It's cone AC. And photograph 10, what do we see in this picture? This is the damage to the um, Orange County captain's car, the hubcap. Now, it's a little strange because of the scales, but is there damage on the right and left of the scale? Am I seeing that right? Or is that a shadow? That's a good question. I, I don't remember or recall anything about on the left side. I only show the one on the... On the right-hand side? The right-hand side. Okay. But it could be. Okay. It's hard to tell on the photo. I want to back up now to photograph nine. You testified that that was a casing at AC. Uh, like the others, you collected that casing, is that right? That's correct. Do you recall, and if you need to look at your report, please do so, do you recall the manufacturer and um, size of that particular casing? Is it okay to look at my report? Any objection, counsel? Can we objection? To her She's reviewing to her report. report? All right, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Page two, middle of page. Do you recall now having looked at your report and refreshed your memory as to the size and manufacturer of the casing found near the mercury at Royal Oaks? That's gonna be a Hornaday, which is the manufacturer, and it's a nine mil. Now, at the Walmart scene, you found two different um, caliber casing sizes, is that right? At the Walmart scene? Yes. Um, and one of the casing sizes was nine millimeter at Walmart. Correct? Yes. And I believe you testified that those were the Winchester consistent with the ammunition from Lieutenant Clayton's firearm. That's correct. Right. Did you find any Hornaday manufactured nine millimeters at the Walmart scene? No. So would you agree or is it, is it true that the nine millimeter manufacturer shell casing at the Royal Oak scene is different than anything you found at the Walmart scene. That's correct. Did you search this Mercury vehicle there at the scene? No. Um, did you eventually search it? Yes. Why didn't you search it there and where did you search it after what process? Uh, needed a search warrant for okay. the vehicle. And so where did the search occur? At 185. George DeSalvia Way, that's going to be the crime scene facility in the evidence bay. And were you personally involved uh, in the search of that vehicle once it was brought to your facility? Yes. Gentlemen, may I approach the witness with state's deposit AE? <clears throat> you may. It's been shown to defense counsel. Man, that's a composite of nine photographs. Please look at them and tell me when you've had a chance to do that. All right, do you recognize the nine photographs? Yes. And what do they depict? This is showing the um, suspect vehicle at our bay. Do they fairly accurately 
depict your search of that vehicle? Yes. Your Honor, we'd ask the court to admit state's exhibit AE as states 33. Any objection? All right, this will be admitted without objection as states exhibit number 33 consisting, composite exhibit consisting of nine sequentially numbered photographs. Permission to publish states 33, Your Honor? Granted. Photograph number one, uh, Ms. Live and Good, can you tell us what we're looking at? This is showing the, um, the left rear corner of the um, vehicle exterior side. Do you traditionally photograph all angles around the outside? Yes. Photograph two, that's the license plate I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Photograph three, why did you take that photograph? What was significant in that photograph? Well, in this particular photograph, when we start, I start doing the inside of the vehicles, I do the exact same thing I did on the outside. I'll start taking photographs of uh, driver's seat, uh, passenger seat, rear seat, if I can get to it. In this particular case, we had a difficult time getting this vehicle to our bay, or the crime scene bay. As you can see, there's a black like rope type of thing. That passenger door just kept flying open along the way. So I wanted to show the rope was still there and also just an overall of what I was seeing inside the vehicle. No. Did you put that rope there or was it there when you searched the vehicle? No, well, no, it was from inside the car to begin with. Uh, when the door opened, it was right there. So I just, just went ahead and used it. To secure the inside? Yes. Vehicle. Understood. Number four of State's Exhibit 33. It's a little hard to see, but can you describe the reason you took the photograph of that little area between the seat and the lever? It's showing that there is something that was located. There's damage to the, um, the side of the, what was it? I don't know, the plastic pieces that are down by the, where the seat belt is, if that helps. Uh, and it's just showing that there is something there. Did you eventually recover that something? Yes. And what was that something? If you need to refer to your report, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, this is what we're gonna consider or what we say is a live round. And this is just showing the cartridge and the bullet all in one. And were you able to determine the manufacturer and caliber of the cartridge and bullet found inside that vehicle? Yes, this particular one, I believe was gonna be. Do you know what it is from your report? If you need to take a look, take, take a look and take a moment to refresh your memory, please. Okay. This one's going to be the a live round that is the Winchester 40 S and W. And Winchester 40 were also found at the Walmart scene. Is that right? Yes. Photograph number five. Can you tell us what you're looking at here? Just was needing to take a photograph of a shirt that was located in the car that showed um, an, the emblem of New Texas fried chicken and pizza. Number six, what was the significance? Let me back up. What is photograph? Where was it found? And why was it uh, taken a, a picture taken of it? This particular case, if I can, is a photograph of a the a Texas fried chicken um, paycheck, per se, and it's got um, the suspect's name on the check itself. Was it found in the target vehicle? It was in the vehicle, yes. 
And same question for number seven. Photograph this is this seven. is showing. This is a photograph of a piece of paper that's from Classic Honda showing the suspect's name on it. And same thing for photograph eight. Different piece of paper, but also I'm not sure if you can see it from that distance. Yes. Uh, it's gonna. It's the paper that was that I'm photographing here was inside this um, UPS envelope, and it has the suspect's name on the piece of paper. And photograph nine, what but, is evidentiary significance in that photograph? This particular photograph is a Hornaday nine mil Luger, and it's a live round. Did you find Hornaday nine millimeter Luger? shell casings at any of the other scenes that you went to on January 9th? The second location where the car was located. I don't have any other questions, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Cross. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. How are you? Good. So it's my understanding on your, based on your testimony that you had a lengthy career in crime scene. That is correct. With lengthy training. That is correct. And obviously you know how important your job is as the person who's the first line on the collection of evidence to document and memorialize that evidence. Yes, I do. And the process, the way you do it, in part is what we've seen in terms of the letters and numbers on those yellow pe plastic pieces that are put next to the bullets and casings, right? That's correct. And the importance of that is you want to photograph, number one, in its place where it's at, that's correct. Because that may have value to an investigation. That's correct. And it's not your decision to make that decision whether it has value. Your decision is to memorialize everything. That's the decision I make, yes. Okay. And so besides placing those plastic pieces, you photograph those individually, correct? Yes. And then you photograph the entire scene near where the other casings are. So we see where everything is, a bigger bigger piece. That's right? correct. And that way we can tell where it is in relation to the Walmart building, correct? Yes. Where it is in relation to the um, parking lot? Yes. Okay. And where it is perhaps in relation to uh, any other important piece of evidence that may develop? Yes. Now, you took photographs of both casings and projectiles, correct? Yes. And as I understand it, a projectile is the bullet, comes out of the front of the gun. Yes. And the casing is the jacket that the bullet is placed in and actually comes out of the gun as well, but a different way. That's correct. And how, what way does it come out of the gun? Depends on the type of gun. Okay. Some eject to the right and some eject to the left. So you'll either have it reject, ejecting to the right or the left? That's correct. And does it eject at a particular angle? Depends on how the gun was fired. Okay. So it, it could eject backwards. I've never seen one do that, but... It comes to the side, 45 degree angle? It, it, if the gun's moving, if you've got a moving target, then it's going to be, you're going to have that type of velocity to show that, that, and it's just where I am seeing where all of that has landed. Does that make sense? So you're seeing the end result. That's correct. But there are variables that interfere with the end result. There, yes. When you have people tracing through a crime scene, 
They're not looking out to see where the casings or projectiles are. Not likely. So they're no. easily kicked around or moved. That's correct. So you can't at any time say with any certainty where that is. That's just exactly. Okay. I can't. Um, but what we know is at some point, if the bullets are exiting to the right, because that's the kind of gun it is, that we will be able to tell, based on other collective evidence, how the gun was being fired. The cartridge casings? Yes. Get eject to the right. Okay. Depending on the, the weapon, but yes. And the weapon that Lieutenant Clayton was holding, the Sauer 9mm, ejects to the right. I believe so. Okay. And so when we see here, and I'm, I'm, if you have a problem, you can step down but um, I'm just going to kind of lean it towards you. So when we see here all these casings that were ejected from Lieutenant Clayton's gun, that's an indication without doubt, maybe not 100%, but pretty high, that she's firing near where those casings are. That's correct. And in this particular case, we had about a six-second to eight second to nine second gunfire, where Detective Clayton is seen running away and shooting down to the ground. You remember that? You I don't that? know. Okay. And you know, based on the the bulletproof vest that she was wearing and her clothing and the blood, that she was in this area. Correct. That's correct. Okay. There are a couple of casings that are hers that are on the other side. And I think K is one of them. K is one of them. You see that's, that? That's correct. That's over there. Okay. Now, that could be explained a couple different ways if you were hypothesizing. Okay. Let me try, okay? Let's say Detective Clayton. What? Oh, I'm sorry. You're okay, I can see it. Okay. Let's say the Detective Clayton is running in that direction and she has her gun and her gun is pointed this way, is that going to eject to the right? See, I can't, I can't testify to that because I don't know. Okay. And if I she, was not there. Okay. I understand. Um, and if she was over in this area and it ejected to the right, that would explain K? It could. Okay. So... You would agree with me that you spent a tremendous amount of time documenting, photographing, memorializing each of these casings and the projectiles. The way I saw it when I got there, okay. yes. Now there came a time when you became aware that another projectile was discovered and someone else collected it. Oh, yes. Okay. And that would have been Detective Ovenfield. Overfield, yes. And what department was he assigned to then? He was at homicide. Okay. Is he issued a camera? No. Okay. I imagine he has an iPhone. I don't know what he carries, to tell you the truth. Okay. And so you were told that a projectile was discovered on the other side of Walmart. Is that correct? Yes. And that he collected it? Yes. And... He never told you specifically where it was recovered. That's correct. As a matter of fact, Detective Cadiz never asked you to go take a photograph of that. I wasn't at, I wasn't there anymore. Okay. I was already back at the crime scene lab with the vehicle. But certainly 
you could have went back if you if you were ordered to do. Oh, if I was asked to, yes, okay. I would go back. And certainly, there's other people in your unit who could have done it as well. We were, we were busy. We were slammed that day. Okay. So I mean, we were all being pulled in different directions. Okay. But because you were never asked to do that, the the statement that you're making that you were or we were pulled in all kinds of directions, that's not the reason you didn't go down and photograph. I can't tell you what the reason was. I just know that I was, was busy that day. Okay, okay, I just wanna make sure, I, I don't, I wanna make sure you hear my question and answer it appropriately. If I was asked you and I was gone. still on duty, I would be more than happy to go. Okay. So nothing prevented you if you were asked? No. Okay. And we were looking at those projectiles. They are all kind of different colors, right? That's correct. Um, some are copper, some are darker copper. Well, depends on how I'm taking the photograph and where the sun can be. Some can be a little darker than others if you're looking at it. Okay. And many times when you find a copper jacket, there is evidence that it has passed through something that is attached to the copper jacket. You're... Rephrase that again, I'm sorry. When you collect a copper jacket, you see a copper jacket, there are times, and let me break this down a little bit for you. There are times when the projectile will go through something before it stops. That's correct. There are times when something will stop the projectile. Yes. An example is um, a tire. It's going to slow down its velocity. It may stop it. It right? could. Okay. If it goes through a window, it's going through glass. That's correct. Okay. Um, if it ricochets off a wall, it may pick up the color of the paint or concrete on the wall. It could. Now, I noticed that when you, um, let's put this down. When you went to the scene that uh, Captain Carter was involved in, you were asked to collect evidence. Is that All correct, right. ma'am? No, I collected it on my own. Oh, so, but you were directed to the scene to do that? Well, I was, yes, I was told there was a second location, so I just went. Right, and who would have told you that? It could have been Detective Cadiz. He could have said something. I can't remember who exactly told me. Okay, and many times you'd agree with me that the lead detective who's running the investigation will direct you to do different things without you even knowing about what they were ahead of time. He, uh, he usually will ask me. So he's polite and he asks you to do it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in this particular case, when you went down to the scene, uh, where are those pictures, Brian? When you went down to the scene, I think you had testified that you collected three projectiles, is that correct? I'd have to look at the pictures again, but it, I believe it was, it could have been three, I'd have to look at my photos. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what's part of this exhibit. Um, make sure I identify it appropriately. Is 
Is this AD? You know which this one is? 32. 32? Okay. I'm referring to exhibit 32, and I'm going to approach you and show you two photographs. And you tell me what those are. Okay, to approach, Judge? I'm sorry. Yeah. This is a projectile at Cone AD. Okay. And where is it located? This projectile was located in front of the vehicle, on the ground. In front of the vehicle that you knew to be Mr. Lloyd's? That's correct. Okay. So can you tell me, if Mr. Lloyd is firing from there, how a projectile would end up in front of his car? I can't tell you that because I don't know. I wasn't at the scene when it all occurred. But you would agree with me a projectile is in front of the car, correct? Yes. And that's right near where you found the casing, correct? No. I believe the spent casing was located by the left rear tire. Of that if car. If you look at the photos. Of that car. Yeah. So if he's at the left rear, and I'm, may I approach? Yes, sir. This is AC. If he's at the left rear of his vehicle, that's where you found the casing. That's correct, but you have to remember that I don't even know if this is all related. Okay. I'm just going with what I'm collecting at the scene. Okay. I, I didn't while I'm hear. There. I didn't hear you say that. I didn't hear the state attorney ask you that question. So I just want to make sure okay. we're on the same page. So you don't even know if this is related. I don't know. But the casing was found near his car, near the back tire. Yes. Okay. And the projectile was found in front of his car. The AA projectile? A projectile. A, or, a, or the AD one. The AD one, the one a, we just went through. AD was located by the, um, can I refresh on my report to really well, give an accurate? I'm, I'm, just so you're clear, I'm not trying to divert to the other one. We'll get to that. I want to talk about the one I showed you first that was in front of the car. The spent casing? Yes. Is AC, and it was located in the parking lot east of the left rear tire. Okay, and that's what we see here. That should be AC. Okay. Is that I'm, AC? It's, it's AC. Okay, then that's, a, then that's the one. Okay. And the projectile that we talked about first that was it found in front of his car what is that this is is would be cone ad and that would be located in the parking lot i've got on here below the left front corner of the the of the vehicle okay And that's AD, correct? That would be AD. It's just the angle, I guess, that I took it. Yes. Now, you can't say whether someone fired a gun in the direction of his car, can you? I'm just going with what the captain was saying, no. Okay, you're relying on the captain's testimony, correct? And the other photograph that was taken, I guess there was two, there was an AA, correct? That's correct. And tell me where that was found. That was located in the parking lot southwest of the building where the vehicle was, was located or okay. recovered. And it's close, closer to the captain's car. That's correct. Okay. And the damage that we're talking about here, which is... Uh, the hubcap, I guess, or the, yes. the wheel. That's the left passenger front wheel. That should be the... Right, I'm sorry, right. I was just going to say it should be the right. The right passenger front yes. wheel. So that's on this side. The captain was on that side. If he's out of his car, if this is the captain's car mm -hmm. and he's getting out, 
That's the left side of the car. Yeah, he gets out on the left that I know of. The damage was to the right side of the car. Right. And that's correct. Okay, and it's pretty low because it's the hubcap. That's correct. Now, you were asked to go back to take additional photographs of the Walmart. Is that correct? At some point, a couple days later, okay. I believe. Do you have the exact date in your report? Yes, I do. And what date is that? On uh, January 15th. Do you know why you were told to go back there and collect more photographs? Just that there was some, I believe, damage to um, one of the walls at the Walmart that okay. was outside of the range of where everything was marked off. Okay. And did you photograph that? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you photograph a different angle where you would be looking from the other side of Walmart facing where the incident with Sergeant Clayton occurred? You should have an overall picture of, the, of everything. I, I have the picture, but I can't introduce evidence in this part of the case. Right, okay. Well, I'm just saying it, there, should, there would be an overall picture of me taking a photograph of the Walmart, just like I, I start off that way. Right, but this is like, if you're going down the sidewalk, um, where at some point in the video, you see my client start to go in that direction before he turns and then pulls his gun. I can't testify to anything in the video. Okay, but you know what I'm talking about when we're talking about the, um, there's this side, which I think is the pharmacy. That's okay. where you're at, the pharmacy. And then there's the other side of Walmart, which is like home goods or something else. Could be. It's something. There's a set, two entrances. Right. And they're on either side of the parking lot. Right. And so you were taking pictures in the direction of the pharmacy way back on the sidewalk. Do you remember that? I don't remember the, I, I remember the, I would take overalls of the location first and then the area where I was told that there was this mark on a wall. And I would do it in different angles, different photos. Yes, ma'am. This is the way it should be. I should, I mean, normally that's how I do it. Yes, ma'am. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna need you to come back and the judge will instruct you on that. Are you done asking questions? Yes, I'm done, Judge. Redirect. Ms. Rotter. Ms. Lockengood, would you agree that you can't say whether a projectile or a shell casing was fired by a specific firearm because you find it on the ground? I can just let you know that a nine mil would come from a nine mil firearm. Right. But you can't match, based upon what you find on the ground, you can't match that to a specific firearm. No, that would be a uh, firearms expert over at FDLE. Right, so, but even if you're not sure if it was fired, you collect it. Anyway. I collect it anyway, that's correct. And you collected anything you found on the ground at Royal Oaks, right? Yes. Anything related to a firearm, that is? Yes. And then, did you in fact send those items to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to be tested against firearms? It could be at one point I sent a lot of stuff over there. Okay, that's all I have, Judge, thank you. All right, ma'am, you're excused for today. You're still under subpoena and you're subject to recall, but you're free to go today. All right, have a good day. <clears throat> Call your next witness. The state calls yes. Detective Shane Overfield.
already have this. The asylums for our firm, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys. I do. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you please tell us your full name and spell your last name for the record, sir? <clears throat> Shane Eric Overfield, O-V-E-R-F-I-E-L-D. Where are you currently employed, sir? Orlando Police Department. How long have you been working with the Orlando Police Department? 15 years. And what's your current assignment and role at the Orlando Police Department? I'm with the Orlando Police Intelligence Unit. Uh, back in January of 2017, were you employed uh, or working in the homicide unit? Yes, sir. Did you respond to the Walmart at 3101 West Princeton Street on the morning of January 9th of 2017? Yes, sir. Now, what were your initial responsibilities when you got to the Walmart that morning? I divided with uh, Detective M Michael Moreshi. He took the outside, and I was uh, directed inside to preserve the video. All right. At some point, well, were you successful in preserving the video? I met with the um, loss prevention manager and told him that we needed to take steps to preserve it and that Sean Williams would eventually be coming to collect it. Did you end up spending a significant amount of time at the Walmart that morning? Yes, sir. And how'd that come about? Uh, Mareshi was uh, Detective Kata's uh, second, so I was abandoned. I had no vehicle, so I was left until another uh, detective was cleared up to come get me. Now, when you were at the Walmart, did there come a point where you were walking around near the front entrance? Multiple times, yes, sir. At some point when you were walking around the Walmart, did you locate what you believe to be a piece of potential evidence in the case? Yes, I, as I exited, I think my final time uh, out of that, the, not the grocery entrance, but this would have been the mer mer merchandise entrance. Yes, sir. Um, as I exited, and was walking um, close to an unmarked vehicle, I spotted a, a projectile. Now, what was the approximate distance, even if it's from where you are in the courtroom or feet from where you located that projectile to where the evidence was discovered surrounding where Lieutenant Clayton came to rest? Could you see it from where you were? Yes, I could see it. There's a road that passes in front of the Walmart, and you have both the grocery, merchandise, and then the outdoor living center. I would say it'd be twice the distance from here to the door. Okay, inside the courtroom, the far door? Yes. And that was the distance, twice that distance was from where Lieutenant Clayton came to rest and where you located this projectile? Correct. All right, when you found the projectile, what did you do? I called Detective Cadiz, uh, or, or, or my uh, Detective Moreshi. And what was, without saying what was said to you, what was the purpose of your phone call? To inform them that I found a projectile. Was any crime scene or were any crime scene personnel still on the scene at the Walmart when you found this projectile? No, sir. They left uh, hours before. All right. Uh, were you basically standing there with it on the phone waiting to see what to do? I was looking for guidance, correct. Okay. Um, from where you were, were you able to observe its characteristics? Yes, sir. Can you describe for the members of the jury the characteristics of the projectile that you found? It, it was a uh, copper projectile. It was had a lot of patina to it, or a lot of uh, age, and a lot of abrasions. It looked um, like it had been there for a while. Did you eventually obtain some guidance on what to do with the projectile? Yes, he asked me to uh, attempt to make contact with a CSI, and I called a uh, uh, CSI Karen Li Living Good, Live and Good, I apologize, and she was busy. There was multiple incidences that stem from this that uh, there was a, two officers that were yes, sir, deceased. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar. So okay. um, what, what happened after that? There was no CSIs available at that point in time, so I called Detective Cadiz back and was instructed to scoop up the bullet in, a, in some sort of container. I had a manila envelope, and then turn it over to uh, Detective, I mean, CSI, uh, Live and Good. Okay, you had a manila envelope? I have a motion, Judge. Um, okay, let me see the attorneys at the bench.
Um, so we don't all have to listen to this noise for a bit. I need to talk to the attorneys. I'm going to send you guys out of the courtroom for a minute. Sorry. I can repeat all that. So I don't have to listen to this noise. No one has to listen to this noise. I need to talk to the attorneys. I'm going to send you all out for a minute. I'm going to give you some instructions. You're not to mention. You're not to mention in any way, shape, or form the death of Officer Norm. Correct. Okay. Okay. Just stick to the questions that you're asked and det um, Lieutenant Clay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. If you have any questions or hesitation, pick not talking about Officer Norm. Okay. Correct. All right. Thanks. We'll give him a few minutes before we bring him back in. <laughs> Do you have one? Okay. Um, you're good. Okay. Where is the is the Zoom witness showing up on my screen? Okay, and it's showing. And we've tested the defense system. There, it's showing up on theirs. Okay. I didn't say his name. Okay, no worries. Yeah, see if they're ready to come back in. Let's bring them back, since they're going to get another break in a minute. I don't know his name. I forgot it. Killing me. Oh, I'm good. State recognized presence of the jury. We do. Defense. She yes, recognized the presence of the jury. All right. Thanks. All right. That went a lot faster than I thought it would. Sorry. At least you got some exercise. <laughs> Mr. Williams, you may resume your questioning. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Um, I think where we left off is that CSI Live and Good told you to collect a projectile. Correct. All right. Now may I approach the witness to what's been marked as state's exhibit AF? You may. 
It's been shown to counsel. Detective, I'm going to hand you face exhibit AF. It's already been opened. If you wouldn't mind opening up the outer package to reveal the inner package and then looking inside the inner package and telling me if you recognize what's in there. Am I allowed to set it on top of the envelope? As long as you don't do it out of the presence of the jury so they can't see you, then yes, sir. Do you recognize what's in State's Exhibit AF? Yes, sir. And what do you recognize it to be? That is the projectile that I um, located and made the phone call about, and then I used the same envelope to scoop it up. Does it appear to be the same, same condition as it was when you put it in the envelope? Yes, sir. And at this time, I ask the court to admit State's AF as the next number exhibit. No objection. All right, this will be admitted without objection as State's number 34. No, and I don't have any further questions. Thank you, sir. Detective. Yes, sir. This is not the first time you testified in court about that particular item, is it? No, sir. As a matter of fact, this is the first time that you mentioned to anybody about it having an operation, at least in the courthouse. You never told me, correct? I don't believe you asked, sir. Okay. Uh, we never, when we testified under oath, made reference to that in a courtroom. I was never asked, no, sir. Okay. And what is it about the fact that you were asked about that particular item that was found in the defendant's pocket? Yes, sir. Did you have a conversation with Detective Cadiz before you came in here? where you guys agreed and conspired to lie about the condition of this bullet? No, sir. You can look at the condition of the bullet and see that it's got a patina and it's got abrasions to it. No, I did not have a conversation with him about the trial. We discussed our new positions. He's in K-9, and I'm in the intelligence unit. And you understand that there's going to be, besides my expert who comes in here, there's going to be a firearms expert from FBLE who's going to come have you looked at his worksheet? No, sir. So let me see if I understand this. A police officer was murdered. A person had shot at her. They actually had shot at each other. And you stumble upon a, a projectile that you decide is old. Did you have a, did you have a objection, question? Objection, compound question. He hasn't asked a question yet, so overall. Objection, testify. Sustained. Did you have a conversation with the deeds the same day, telling him what your observations were? When I located the projectile? Yeah. Yes, sir, on the phone. Okay. And so the two of you agreed, based on that conversation, that you just collect it and send it along its way and not do anything to die. Is that correct? No, it's not correct.
Were you not directed to collect the projectile in an envelope and turn it over to the lead crime scene investigator, Karen Livingood? Yes, after I made attempts to get a CSI there, but there was none available. So you made attempts? Correct. Okay. And so that means you picked up the phone and called someone at CSI? I called uh, Karen, correct. You called Karen? Correct. How was the conversation with Karen? I asked her if she was able to return back. Objection calls for hearsay. Sustained. Impeachment, Judge. Um. Isn't it true that you never had a conversation Karen about that projectile. No. Isn't it true you never asked her to come or send someone else to come? No. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add? That's all I got for this witness, Judge. Redirect. No, Your Honor. May this witness be excused. I want to know Mr. Peter. All right. Detective, you're free to go today. You remain under subpoena and are subject to recall. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Warren. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been informed our next witness is appearing by Zoom. Sorry. I've been informed our next witness is appearing by Zoom. Um, so it's going to take a few minutes to check the connection and make absolutely sure it's working. And instead of you sitting here watching us do that, I'm going to send you back to the jury room. Take your afternoon break. We'll bring you back in just a minute. Thanks. Mr. Buxman, before we test, before we test that Zoom connection, tell me, this is the medical examiner from the first autopsy? Yes, sir. And what is her testimony going to be? She performed an autopsy. She removed a projectile from shot eight That's it? That's it. Okay. And obviously where she removed it from, but that's it. Okay. I just want to make sure that was all. That's all it. right. Judge, we have one issue raised. Yes, sir. You need to turn your mic on. Up all the way. And um, Ms. O'Shea is in a better position to address this specifically. I'll give you the general overview. We got a phone call or we had conversations with someone who's watching the live stream. Uh -huh. And apparently, Detective Overfield said during that live stream, and it was heard on the live stream, that, go ahead, Kate. Okay. We're renewing our motion for mistrial. When did this supposedly occur? While we were sidebar. Did you have any indication the jury heard it over the white noise? I assume if the camera could hear it, they could hear him. What live stream are you talking about that would be recording any of this? Because. Go ahead. It's do you have a copy of that transcript? Well, we can get one, Judge. State, do you have a response to this? Uh, Mr. Williams, that would be you since it was your witness. Go ahead. At this point, we have a secondhand report from an unidentified person who says they heard something on a live stream that the jury has no access to. So there's no evidence of anything for me to respond to, Judge, other than to ask the court to deny the motion because there is no evidence of anything to respond to. I don't have anything other than, I don't have any evidence the jury heard any of this. I don't know what happened. So at this point, I'm gonna deny the motion for mistrial. 
if you have further evidence, obviously bring it to me Judge. and we'll see what we can do. So I'm showing on my screen and I need these identified because the recording in progress. That's very nice. Um, I have you, Mr. Boxman. Deborah Allen and someone called Sarah's iPhone. Can you hear? Okay. Your Honor, that's the ME. And Deborah Allen is the court reporter that arranged the Zoom meeting for us. Okay. Of March. Well, so we have. You're going to need to identify everyone for the jury so they know who's. Doctor, can you hear us? She appears unable to hear me. Doctor, can you hear me? This is Judge Marquez. Can you hear me? She is unable to hear me. Can you hear me, Doctor? Yes. As long as she can hear you. She can't hear me. Judge. Yes, sir. Just one more time. We object to this testimony. They could have introduced... Um, the projectiles from the ground, the wall, they didn't have to introduce uh, what came out of her body. It's 403 prejudicial and we're objecting. Okay. Objection noted for the record. Same ruling as before. All right, doctor. Are you, you ready? I'm sorry. Can you hear me, doctor? Yes. Okay. okay ready? All right, let's bring the jury back in. Oh, one more objection. Wait. Yes. Not to mention the court instructed these jurors probably a half a dozen or more times that they are not to consider any evidence regarding the Dixon killing. And now you're bringing in stuff. It's going to be confusing to the jury. They're not going to know how to deal with this kind of evidence. I can deal with that in jury instructions. I mean, if you want me to read them the jury instruction about the Williams rule jury instruction. I'm happy to do that. Do you want that, Mr. Lennon? No. State, you're requesting the Williams rule jury instruction? I'll leave it up to the defense, Your Honor. Okay. And the court. All right. And for the record, that would be, let me give you the exact number, 2.4 evidence of other crimes, wrongs, or acts. Yes. Actually, I'm going to exercise my prerogative as a judge, and I'm going to read it, instructing them that this is only for identity purposes. I assume this is what you're offering it for is Mr. Lloyd's identity as the shooter? Yes, to link okay. the guns. And All right. All right, let's bring them in. I'm going to read them the instruction first, and then you can call the witness. Got it on the record? No. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to have to get that on the record.
State recognized presence of the jury? Yes, sir. Defense? Yes, ma'am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, prior to you um, hearing this witness's testimony, I have an instruction to read to you. The evidence you are about to receive concerning other crimes, wrongs, or acts allegedly committed by the defendant will be considered by you for the limited purpose of identity, and you shall consider it only as it relates to those issues. However, the defendant is not on trial for a crime, wrong, or act that is not included in the indictment. You may call your next witness. State call Dr. Sarah Kajovic. She'll be appearing by Zoom for the record, Your Honor. All right. And on the Zoom link. Doctor, this is Judge Marquez, can you hear me? Yes. All right. State, do you recognize her as the witness that you just called, Dr. Sarah Segovich? I do, Your Honor. Defense, do you recognize her to be Dr. Sarah Segovich? Yes, sir. All right, raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, you may inquire. Yes. Doctor, will you please introduce yourself to the jury? They're able to see you on their individual monitors here in the courtroom. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Zadovich. What do you do for a living? I'm a forensic pathologist. For which area? I work for the District 9 and 25 Medical Examiner's Office in Orlando. Okay. Let me, are you, are you considered a medical examiner? Yes, that is my, my title is Deputy Chief Medical Examiner. Let me direct your attention to December 14th of 2016. Did you perform an autopsy on someone by the name of Sade Dixon? Yes. During the course of that autopsy, did you recover a projectile from her body? Yes. From where did you recover that projectile? What part of her body? From her right arm. Okay. I'm showing you over the, the camera States Exhibit AR. And I'm opening up, looking inside of that item. I'm going to show you a smaller item from within. Can you see that item in my hand? Yes, I can. Do you recognize that item in my hand? Yes. How do you recognize it? Um, that's the typical uh, evidence container that we use uh, if we recover projectiles from decedents during the examination, uh, which we then put in white filter paper and sealed with the evidence tape. Do you see your initials on this item? Yes, my initials are on the label. And does this item appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition, the projectile, as when you removed it from Sade Dixon's body? Yes. This time, Your Honor, state would move AR into evidence as 35. Over the defense's objections, the court will admit this as state's exhibit number 35. Thank you, doctor. I have no other questions. Stay on the line. No, the defense may have some questions. Cross. All right. May this witness be excused. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, doctor. You are free to go. Thank you. Call your next witness. One moment, Your Honor. The state calls Ed Vanderberg.
I do. Let, let me redo that for a second. Sorry. Sir, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. All right. Thank you. Have a seat. It's a long trial, folks. Everybody gets tired, including the clerks. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? Edward Vandenberg, crime scene investigator, Orlando Police Department. How long have you been a crime scene investigator? 17 years. Let me direct your attention to January 17th of 2017. Did you respond to a residence located at 1157 Lescott Lane in Orange County, Florida? Yes, I did. When you arrived, what was your purpose of going there? To document and collect evidence. Okay. And did you do that after you arrived? Yes, sir, I did. Did you photograph the scene in some of the items that, in the items that you located within? Yes, sir, I did. May I approach? You may. Showing us from Mark State's exhibit AH, a composite of, I believe, 18 photos. Can you take a look at those photos? Tell me if you recognize what they show. Yes, sir. These are the photographs I took. Do those fairly and accurately depict the residence and some of the items outside and within that residence? Yes, sir, it does. This time, state would move AH into evidence as 35, I believe. 36. 36, Any sorry, Your Honor. That's the one you showed Those are the photographs. I just... Sorry? No, they were never introduced. Did you also? Did you also create a diagram of the residence items that you located? Yes, sir, I did. May I approach again? You may. Showing you from Mark to State's exhibit G. Do you recognize that diagram? Yes, sir, it is a, a diagram I created. Okay, does that fairly and accurately show the general locations of the rooms in the house as well as certain items you found inside or and around? Yes, sir, it does. Is it, is it a scale diagram or is it a, just a not to scale? It is not to scale, sir, at this time. State would move AG into evidence as. So be well, let me back up. Let me, AG, can I, I'm asking to move. That'll be. Uh, that'll be moved into evidence as states number 36. It's a composite exhibit consisting of 18 sequentially numbered photographs. And the state would seek admission of AG into evidence as 37. Any objections to that one, Mr. Lenneman? No objection. All right. This will be received without objection as state's exhibit number 37. May I publish the photos in states 36, Your Honor, at the same time with the diagram 37? Yes. Okay, showing you photograph one of states 36. Describe for the jury what we're looking at. That's approaching the scene, uh, the house and the scene itself. Did you locate anything on 
any clothing type items on the roadway in front of the residence? Yes, there was a ballistic vest on the roadway. Okay. And are those the, the items that, the, is that the item that we see in the middle of the photograph of the black yes. item? Yes, it is, sir. Were there certain other items located around that bulletproof vest? Yes, sir. There was a, um, a, a phone, uh, excuse me, a cell phone battery, and there was a blue bag, okay. blue camo bag. Showing you photograph two of states 36. What do we see here? You see the bulletproof vest, the blue camo bag, the cell phone battery, and U.S. currency. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did, sir. May I approach? Yes, sir. Showing the state's exhibit AI. Do you recognize that item? Yes, that is a packaging I, I did on vest. Okay. Is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it that day and packaged it? Yes, sir. This time state will move AI into evidence as 38. Any objections? No objections. This will be received without objections as state number 38. And because we have photographs of a lot of these items, I'm not going to ask you to take it out and show it to the jury at this point. Yes, sir. You mentioned there was a blue bag as well, the bag we see in the photograph there? Yes, the blue camo bag, yes. Okay. What was found inside of that bag? If I may refer to my notes, ma'am. There were 36 40 Smith & Wesson rounds, ammunition. What do you mean by a round? A bullet. Okay. Unfired? A live Unfi round? Unfired bullet, yes, sir. Did you collect those unfired live rounds? Sir, yes, I did. May approach? You may. Showing what's been marked to states exhibit B as in boy A. Do you recognize this item? Yes, this is okay. the box I packaged them in. Okay, can you open it up, look inside, and tell me if you recognize the contents of the and scissors? Thank you. It? Yes, I do. It's the that is the blue bag with the ammunition in it. And is that are those items in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected them? Yes, it is, sir. If you may have mentioned this, and you did, I forgot. What caliber were those rounds? Those were 40 Smith and Wesson rounds. It's time the state would move. B A and evidence is the next in line, Your Honor. Any objections? Yes. Oh. Overruled on relevance. Over the defense's objections, um, this will be received as state's exhibit number 39. You also mentioned a cell phone battery was located. We see that. Yes, sir. Which again? You may. I'm showing you what from state's exhibit B, B as in boy. Can you recognize that item? Yes, sir. It's the package I placed the battery in. Can you open it up, look inside, and tell me if you recognize the contents? It? Yes, I do, sir. What is it? It is a Samsung cell phone battery. Is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it that, that day at Lescott Lane? Yes, sir, it is. This time, state would move BB into evidence as 40. This will be received without objection as state's exhibit number 40. Thank you. 
showing you photograph three from States 36. What does this show? That is the front of 1157 Lescott Lane. And we see some markers about some things near the front door and to the right of the front door. Are those items that you marked? Yes, it is, sir. Okay, I'm showing you photograph, photographs four and five. What do these items show? AB is a black hooded sweatshirt. AC are two semi-automatic pistols. Okay, and do the letters in the photograph correspond with the letters in the diagram we see here in front of us? Yes, they do, sir. For the record, the diagram is states 37. You mentioned a black hooded sweatshirt? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm showing you photograph six from states 36. Is that just a close up of the sweatshirt? That is the sweatshirt, yes, sir. Approach again, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Showing you States Exhibit B, C for identification. Can you take a look in that item and tell me if you recognize it? Yes, I do, sir. Okay. And do all these items I'm showing you have your initials and your handwriting? Yes, they do, sir. Okay. Can you open that up, look inside, and tell me if you recognize the contents? That is a black sweatshirt I packaged, sir. Is it the same, answer the same condition as when you collected it that day? Yes, it is, sir. This time, state would move B, C into evidence as 41. Any objections? All right, this will be received without objection as state's exhibit 41. Within that sweatshirt, did you locate a cell phone battery? Cell phone charger, sir, a yes. charger, I'm sorry. May I approach again? You may. I'm showing you what's marked as State's Exhibit B, as in boy, D, as in dog. Do you recognize that? One cell phone charger, sir. Is it the same, the same condition as when you collected it from the sweatshirt? Yes, it is, sir. Move B, D into evidence at States 42. Any objection? No objection. This will be received without objection at States 42. Okay. Going back to photos four and five of States 36, we looked at the sweatshirt at um, marker AB. What was found at marker AC? Two semi-automatic pistols, sir. Okay. okay. Showing you photograph seven of states 36. Does this photograph show those two pistols that you just described? Yes, it does, sir. Okay. And where were these firearms located in relation to the front door? To the right of it, sir. I was looking at the door. Showing you photograph eight of States 36. What kind of firearm is this? That is a Smith and Wesson Model SW 40 VE semi automatic pistol 40 caliber. Did you collect this firearm and its contents? Yes, I did, sir. No approach. You may. I'll give you standing permission to approach this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Extend it also to you, Mr. Warren. Showing you what's been marked as States Exhibit A, J for identification. Do you recognize that?
You recognize it? Yes, I do, sir. Is it the same firearm you spoke about? Yes, it is, sir. The same, same condition as when you collected it that evening? Yes, it is, sir. This time, state would move. All right, Your Honor. AJ and evidence is next in line. Any objection? You may. Sure. Any objection? No objection. All right, this will be admitted without objection as State's Exhibit 43. I believe you said this is a semi-automatic firearm? Yes, it is, sir. Take the firearm out and show it to the jury for me. Yes, it was, sir. With how many rounds? There was one chambered in the, into the chamber itself, and there were 14 rounds in the magazine. And how many rounds did the magazine hold at full capacity? At full capacity, I think it's a 15-round magazine. Okay. So the firearm wasn't topped off? No, it was not. When you collect a firearm like this, do you remove the projectile from the chamber and package it separately and remove the projectiles or the, sorry, the cartridge casings from the magazine and package those separately? I do. Okay. Did you document the brand or the type of rounds located inside this firearm? Yes, I did, sir. Can you describe to the jury what type of First of all, what caliber were they? They were 40 caliber rounds. And what brands? If I may refer to my notes, please. The chambered round was a Win 40 cal automatic SW. Inside the magazine was loaded four was 14 rounds, and those were six Win 40 s and three Perfecta 40 s and and five R&D 40 s and rounds. And is Win short for Winchester rounds? I would assume so, yes. Showing you photograph nine of States 36. What does this show? That is the Glock model 17 9 millimeter semi automatic pistol. Showing you the mark of States exhibit A and K. Did you collect that firearm and its contents? Yes, I did, sir. Look inside that box. Tell me if you recognize the contents of the box. Yes, I do, sir. That is the pistol I packaged and collected and packaged that day. And did you collect, did you package the round in the chamber and uh, other rounds separately as well? Yes, I did, sir. Is that item in the same, substantially the same condition as when you collected it? Yes, it is, sir. This time, the state will move AK into evidence as, I believe, 44. No okay. objection. All right, this will be received to states 44 without objection. Can you just pick it up and show that to the jury? Thank you. 
at some point was a search warrant obtained that allowed you to go inside the house and search for evidence? Yes, there was, sir. And is a search warrant a document signed by a judge giving you permission to go inside and do a search warrant? Yes, it is, sir. Describe the inside of the house. Was it clean? Was it furnished? It was, it was sparsely furnished. Uh, it was dirty, and it was lived in. Showing you photograph 10 of States 36. What do we see here? That is the doorway to bedroom we marked A, and that is a chin-up bar and a black knitted cap. Did you collect that cap that we see in the photograph? Yes, I did, sir. You recognize it? That is the black knit cap I collected. Is it in the same, substantially the same condition as when you collected it that evening? Yes, it is, sir. This time, state would move BE into evidence as 45. Any objection? No objection. This will be received without objection as states number 45. <laughs> Showing you photograph. 11 of states 36. Did you locate any ammunition or a magazine in one of the bedrooms? Yes, I did, sir. Down to states 37. What room would this photograph correspond to the diagram? That would be bedroom A. Right here, the diagram. Yes, sir. Describe the magazine and its contents to the jury. It was an extended magazine, and it contained 39 millimeter rounds of ammunition. Did you collect the, that magazine in its rounds? Yes, I did, sir. This is the box I packaged the ammunition and the magazine. Can you open it up, look inside? It? Yes, it is, sir. It's the magazine and the ammunition I packaged. Is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you packaged it? Yes, it is, sir. This time, state would move AL into evidence as 46. Any objections? No objection. This will be received as states number 46 without objection. You pull out that you send the magazine to show the jury. Yes, it is, sir. Did you document what brand these 9 rounds were? Yes, I did, sir. Yes, sir. There were 17 Perfector 9 millimeter rounds, six Win 9 millimeter rounds, one Blazer 9 millimeter round, three Hornady 9 millimeter rounds, and one GM. Nine millimeter round. Showing you photograph 12 of states 36. Did you find anything in the closet of that? Yes, sir. As you see in the photograph, a uh, bottle of water, a white glove, and a jar of Lessig pickles. Did you locate anything in the toilet near the bedroom? I photographed and, and uh, collected a top of a cell phone. 
That was in the bathroom of bedroom B, marked B. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is the stop of the cell phone, uh, Samsung tel cell phone. Okay. You said mentioned Samsung. Is that the same brand as the charger? Yes, sir. And the and the very um, battery. Okay. That was collected. This time, state would move B H into evidence as forty seven. Any objections? No objection. This will be received without objection as states forty seven. You said you found the top of the cell phone. Did you find the rest of the cell phone? No, I did not. I did not find or collect it. Did you remove the toilet and check the trap and all that? No, I did not. Are you aware whether somebody else did that later? From what I understand, yes. Did you locate additional, an additional 40 rounds on scene? Yes, I did, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I see there's some 40 rounds collected from the scene. Are they in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected them? Yes, sir. This time, state would move B.I. into evidence as 48. Any objection? I'm sorry, B.G. into evidence as 48. All right, this is B.G. Any objections? No objection. This will be received without objection as states 48. Once you were done at this scene, did you take any of these items back to the lab and photograph them further? Yes, I did. And I forgot to show you this earlier. Photograph 13 of States 36. What do we see in the toilet here? That is the top of the cell phone located in the toilet in bedroom B. Okay. Photograph 14. What do we see here? That is the Glock Model 17 I collected at the scene with the chambered round with the chambered uh, cartridge. Photograph 15 of States 36, what is that? That is a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber collected at the scene along with the magazine. The rounds next to it are the ones that were loaded in the magazine and the one on top is the one that was chambered in the weapon itself. Photograph 16 of States 36. That was the extra magazine located in bedroom A along with the, mag with the uh, cartridges removed from the magazine. And photograph 17, you mentioned you recovered an additional 49. That was the rounds. 40 rounds uh, that I recovered from the scene. Okay. And photograph 18 of States 36. What is Those that? Are the, that was the ammunition, the 40 uh, caliber rounds removed from the blue camel bag found at the scene. Did you examine the two firearms that we've been talking about for the presence of fingerprints? Yes, I did, sir. I'm assuming you did that when you got back to your lab? Yes, I did, sir. Are you trained in how to look for fingerprints on items? Yes, sir. Were you able to locate any fingerprints on either of those firearms, the magazines, or the rounds? No, I did not, sir.
On TV, on CSI, they get bigger prints and everything. Is that a common occurrence for you not to be able to find fingerprints on certain items? Yes, it is. Okay. Did you do anything else with these two firearms as far as swabbing them for evidence or collecting evidence? Yes, I obtained a swab of suspected DNA from both firearms from the pistol grips, the slide, and the um, trigger. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked as states exhibit. The VI, the swabs from the 40 caliber Smith and Wesson, and BJ, the swabs from the block. Can you open up those with the side of the These are the swabs I obtained from the pistols. Are they in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected them, except for additional markings showing that they were sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? Yes, sir. Okay. And how do you collect a swab from the firearm like this? Well, you use a sterile swab using sterile water. And what you do is you put the water onto the swab itself, the cotton area, and you rub it against the object you're trying to obtain suspect the DNA from, you secure it with the cap, and then you place it back, or box, or you ca uh, place it back into the um, envelope, and that's it. And you did that each procedure, once for the one gun, and one, one for the 40 caliber, one for the nine millimeter? Yes, I did, sir. All right. Were the two firearms sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for further testing? Yes, they were. Did you have any involvement in that testing process? No, I did not, sir. Let me direct your attention to August 5th of 2017. Did you make contact with a man named Markeith Lloyd? Yes, I did, sir. Do you see Mr. Lloyd here in court? Yes, I do, sir. Can you please point him out and tell me what he's wearing and where he's sitting? Right over there with the, I assume is a blue checkered shirt. Your Honor, may the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant? Well. Did you collect a DNA standard from the defendant? Yes, I did, sir. How do you do that? You take, again, a sterile swab and you ask the person to open their mouth, and you take it from the side, inside cheek, which is called the buccal area inside the mouth, which we, why we call it a buccal swab. And then again, you package it and send it off. And was that done pursuant to a court order allowing you to do that? Yes, it was. Was anybody else present when you did that procedure? At the time, Detective Cadiz, and I remember a uh, gentleman who I think was an attorney for the defendant. Okay. And once you performed that procedure, what did you do with the swabs? I took it back, secured it, and placed it into property and evidence. Let me go to the Marcus Hmm. That is a swab I package, sir. Okay, is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collect it? Yes, it is, sir. Do you know if that item was sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for further DNA? Analysis? I thought it was, yes. Did you have any involvement in that DNA testing process? No, I did not, sir. Thank you, sir. No other questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Bussman. Mr. Lenneman Cross, you have standing permission to approach this witness.
How are you doing, sir? Good afternoon. Um, no, obviously not everything was introduced that you collected at the scene, correct? Yes. Um, one of the things that I observed, I think it was in States 36. Where would 36 be, Rich? Yeah. Just the one where the bed, the bed, thank you. My pro oh, you said I can approach. Sorry. Sir, I'm showing you what's been part of States 36. Do you recognize that photograph? Yes, sir. And you took that photograph? Yes, I did, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, in that photograph, appears to be like a makeshift with some writings on it. Did you collect those writings? Excuse me? Did you collect those writings? Yes. Okay. Is your mic on, Mr. White? Yeah, it's on, Judge. Okay. It's on. Those are all the questions I have right now, Judge. All right. You, so, redirect. No question, Charles. All right, sir, you're excused for today. You remain under subpoena and subject to recall. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. Right. Sure. All right, folks, it's been a long day, so we're going to call one more witness, and then um, that'll be it for you all for today. We've got some other things to do that we can do and send you guys back to the hotel. All right? Thanks. Sure, no problem. Okay. Take call Sean Johnson, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. I do. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, yeah, my name is Sean Michael Johnson. It's S H A W N. Where do you work? I'm employed by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the Orlando Regional Operations Center in the Biology DNA section. And what do you do on a daily basis in the DNA section? Uh, my primary duties are to examine items uh, from crime scenes and identify body fluid stains such as blood, semen, or saliva. Uh, I then perform DNA analysis on these stains and try to determine uh, DNA information from those stains and eventually compare any information that I obtain to DNA profiles from individuals who may or may not be involved in the case. Can you describe to the jury your educational background, your training, and your experience that allows you to do that job? 
Uh, sure, my, I have a bachelor's of science degree in biochemistry with a minor in chemistry from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I completed approximately a two year long training program through FDLE that dealt with conventional serology, which is the identification of the body fluid stains. And then the second year dealt with the actual DNA analysis. And when, after you obtained your educational background, how long have you been working for FDLE? I had to be 25 years in April. All in the DNA lab? Yes. Can you estimate about how many times you have conducted DNA analysis in your 25 year career? I am over uh, 20,000 samples now. Okay. Do DNA analysts at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement undergo routine proficiency training? Yes. What does that mean? I'm required actually to take two uh, proficiency tests a year. And what that is, is a test that is purchased from an outside company. Uh, I know that it's a proficiency test and I run it alongside other cases. I perform the same, I handle it as if it is a real case and I um, send out, the, res the results are sent out and graded by the company as a pass or a fail. Have you passed all of your proficiency testing? Yes. Have you ever been permitted in court to provide opinion testimony regarding your results of DNA analysis and comparison? Yes. About how many times? Uh, today will be my 174th opportunity. Can you briefly describe for the jury, in layman's terms, what DNA is? Sure. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Simply, more simply put, it's this material that controls the functions of the cells in our body. It makes us who we are. It's our genetic profile. Uh, we, actually, we get half of our DNA from our mother and half from our father at conception. DNA actually is approximately 99.9% .9 the same from person to person. This large portion makes us human beings. It gives us two arms and two legs. It gives us the ability to communicate. Po only 0.1% approximately is different. You can see a lot of the differences uh, by looking at people. Hair color, eye color, height, weight, um, and so forth. Um, within that 0.1%, what I look at are 15 areas of the DNA that differ from person to person by their size. And it's these sizes at these 15 areas that make up an individual's DNA profile. What method of DNA analysis does Florida Department of Law Enforcement use? It's called the STR or short tandem repeat method. And what a short tandem repeat is, is just the uh, measurement or the uh, pieces of DNA that make up the length of the pieces of DNA. Is that a method of DNA testing used by scientific labs all over the world? Yes, it is. Is DNA testing like what you did done in areas other than the court system? Yes, it's used in uh, cancer research. It's used in mass disaster identifications, uh, in paternity testing also. Now, if you get a DNA sample, either from, say, a crime scene or from somebody's individual swabbing of DNA, a known standard, can you walk the jury briefly through the process you go through in a DNA analysis? Sure, a portion of the sample is, is taken, and the first step is the extraction uh, part of it. What that is is um, the application of heat and chemicals, and it breaks open the cells in the stain and gets the DNA out of the cells and into solution. Uh, once that is done, uh, the next step is called quantitation, and that just tells me how much DNA I was able to get from the stain. Uh, once I know approximately how much is DNA is that I'll be working with, the next step is amplification, or PCR, which is, stands for polymerase chain reaction. And all that does is makes millions of copies of the DNA at the 15 areas that I'm testing, and it amplifies it, doesn't change the DNA in any way. It just gives more of those copies of DNA in order to detect the size of those pieces of DNA. And then that's the last step. The last step is taking that amplified product and determining the sizes of the DNA at each area of DNA. Does anything in that process cause DNA to change from one form or one person's to another? No. Okay. What controls are put in place to make sure that things aren't contaminated when you do your analysis mm -hmm. and things like that? Uh, there's two types of controls, the negative and positive control. The negative control is the control that is looking for any contamination. What that is is a, uh, a sample that goes along with each case and it has all the chemicals and all the, re and all the reagents and all the um, heat applied to the negative control that the actual samples do. So it's treated the same except for no DNA. And so the DNA result of a negative control must be no results. And so if I, at the end, if there are no results in the negative control, it tells me there's no contamination. Uh, the other control is a positive control, and that is a sample that I know the DNA profile for. 
And so at the end of the DNA analysis, I am looking for a specific DNA profile. If I see that DNA profile, then I can, am reassured that the entire process is working the way it should. So those controls are put in place to make sure that the process, to maintain the integrity of the process and make sure the process worked right? Correct. And if it didn't work right, would those controls tell you something was wrong? Yes, they would. What if you're handed or you're working five or so different pieces of evidence from the same case? How do you make sure that you have DNA from one item doesn't get put on another item accidentally? Sure. At, at no time are there more than one piece of evidence from any case open. Uh, and so after, if there are more than one piece of evidence in a case, after the completion of one evidence, it's sealed back up, put in uh, storage. Um, the butcher paper is changed. We use butcher paper to change in between items. The uh, countertop is wiped down um, bef between items. Um, myself, I'm changing glove gloves constantly throughout the whole process, especially between items. Uh, I'm wearing a mask to keep my DNA off the evidence and to keep the evidence off of me. And same with the lab coat. I'm wearing a lab coat, again, to keep my DNA off the evidence and the evidence off of me. And did you follow all those procedures in this case? Yes. All right. Are you also trained in statistics and how to calculate statistical frequencies? Yes. Can you briefly describe that training? Uh, it was just part of the DNA analysis training. Uh, it was um, just learning to um, take, use po population frequencies and to determine the, uh, how common or rare DNA profile is in the general population. Because if a person matches, if an unknown sample matches a person, I have to put a statistical significance to that match. Okay, and I'll ask you some more questions about that as we go through. Your Honor, at this time, I'd request permission to allow this witness to give opinion testimony in the area of DNA. What, what, why do you? All right, you may proceed. Were you provided some evidence in the case of State of Florida versus Marquis Floyd? And yes. And specifically under either case number 16112931 or 20170111345? Yes. All right. Is it customary for known DNA standards taken from a known person face to face to be provided to you to analyze? Yes. And what's the purpose of having a known standard? If I obtain any information from the evidentiary samples or um, crime scene evidence, then I need a DNA standard from a person in order to uh, make comparisons, whether that person is included or matches anything that I find. Did you receive a DNA, DNA standard represented to you to have come from a Marquis Floyd? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit AM. Do you recognize that item? Yes, I do. Uh, by the FDLE case number in my handwriting, it is Exhibit K2 with my initials, and then my initials are on the seal when I sealed it. And it says buckle swab for Marky Floyd in the packaging? Yes. What's a buckle swab? A buckle swab is just a sterile swab, Q-tip, um, uh, just a swabbing of the inside of the cheek. Did you analyze the known DNA standard collected from Marquis Floyd to determine whether you could extract or whether you could find any DNA from it? Yes, I did. When did you use the same procedure you just described to the jury a few minutes ago? Yes. Were you able to obtain a DNA profile from that known standard from Marquis Floyd? Yes, it, I was. What's a DNA profile? Like I said earlier, it's those pieces of DNA that I'm looking at, the 15 areas, and I was able to obtain the, the size, sizes of each um, area and obtain a complete DNA profile. And what's the difference between a complete DNA profile and a partial DNA profile? If I get results that are not usable at anything less than the number of areas that I'm testing, then that would be a partial profile. Okay. But in this case, you got a full DNA profile from that known standard from Marquis Floyd. That is correct, and that's okay. typical results of a uh, buckle swab. Okay. Did you also receive some other pieces of evidence in connection with this case to analyze for the presence of DNA? Yes. Showing you what's been marked as states exhibit BI and BJ, swabs taken from the pistol grip of a Glock 17 as well as a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber firearm. Did you analyze those two items for the presence of DNA? Yes, I did. Were you able to locate any D DNA on either one of those swabs from either one of the firearms? Uh, yes, there was uh, some DNA information that was obtained, yes. Okay. 
were you, did you have enough DNA evidence to allow you to compare the DNA from the swabs from the two firearms to determine if it was left by the same person, by the DNA profile of Marquis Floyd? Uh, no, I, I did not. Uh, the limited information was um, so limited that this, the data was not interpretable. So you just didn't have enough DNA data from the swabs from the guns to do any kind of comparison? Correct. What would cause that? Because we see on TV, they get DNA from everything. What would cause us not to be able to get enough DNA? The DNA from the, a gun, a firearm, is considered touch DNA. And it is what that sounds like. Uh, for example, if I, if I touch the bench here and swab where I touched, I transferred skin cells, but I would not expect to get my DNA profile because probably not enough transferred. But if I rub it for five minutes and then swab it, then I, I would expect to get some information. Anything like a gun, or it, you just don't know how how it was touched or how often it was touched. Was the person wearing gloves? Was it wiped down? Many things can um, take off the skin cells from the gun. And so even if even though I'm amplifying the DNA, if you start with very, very little, then very, very little is amplified, and that's the case in this situation. Okay. So just because someone touches an item doesn't mean DNA is going to be left there in an amount that allows you to analyze. In my opinion, DNA is going to be left there, but just not enough to be um, tested and used for comparison. Did you receive a pair of camouflage pants? Yes. Showing you what's been introduced into evidence as States Exhibit 18. Do you recognize that item? And if so, did you analyze it for the presence of DNA? I do recognize the item, and I did um, analyze samples from it. Where did you take the samples that you tested from those pants? I took a sample uh, for the wearer of the, of the pair of pants. And just using common sense, I, uh, where, where you put a pair of pants on or a person wears their pants, I swabbed from inside the uh, waistband area, anywhere it would come in skin contact and uh, inside the front pockets where your back of your hand would rub every time you put your hands in your pocket. And also these pants had buttoned up zipper area, so there was a button fly. And so those buttons I also swabbed using um, one swab and took that swab onto DNA. Were you able to locate any DNA from those different swabs you took from the wear errors areas of the camouflage pants? Uh, yes, uh, some DNA results were obtained, yes. Was the DNA that you obtained from one person or multiple people? Uh, it was a mixture, meaning from more than one person. When you obtain a mi when you have a mixture, meaning it came from multiple sources, are you sometimes able to tell whether there was a major contributor and a minor contributor? Yes, sometimes. And what is meant by those terms? Um, example I like to use is if you if you have a brand new baseball hat and you give it to a person to wear for a month and then you give it to a second person to wear for a week and then swab that hat, the DNA results are gonna have, the DNA profile, it's gonna be a mixture, and it's gonna say that it's gonna show one, the person who actually wore it longer is a much higher donator of the amount of DNA to that mixture, and that person is a major contributor to the mixture. And I'm able to see that visually through the graphical representation of the data, and, and if, if necessary, do um, ratio comparisons to see um, if the person is a major or minor contributor. If you give a, the same, a brand new hat to two people to wear for two weeks for one person and two weeks for the other, the mixture is going to be 50-50. And at that point, then the major and minor contributor could not be determined most of the time. Were you able to determine a major and a minor contributor to the swabs that you collected from the camouflage pants? No, I was not able to determine a major or minor. OK. Did you compare the DNA that you obtained from the camouflage pants to the known DNA standards of Marquis Floyd? Yes, it did. And what did you find? The, um, uh, the Marquis Floyd is included as a possible contributor to that mixed DNA profile obtained from the wearer of the camouflage pants. Now, what do you mean by included as a possible contributor? Uh, literally just taking the numbers that make up Marquis Floyd's uh, DNA profile and it, comparing them to the num the size of and pieces of DNA within the mixture, and if they are present in that mixture, then he, he's included. And then I perform a statistical analysis analysis to the to the strength of that inclusion. By performing that statistical analysis, do you give meaning to the like the likelihood that he is a contributor? Yes, it's how common or, or rare that mixture that an individual is as far as being included. When you perform that statistical 
statistical analysis, what were your results as to the likelihood that the DNA from the camouflage pants came from Mark Heath Lloyd? And with the frequency of occurrence of that MEX DNA profile for unrelated individuals is approximately one in seven billion. What does that mean? It means that it would take, it would take approximately seven billion individuals before I would expect to find a DNA profile that would be from, a, from an individual that would be included in that mixture. Okay. And how many people are on the face of the earth? Uh, approximately seven billion. So as the population of the face of the earth, the DNA profile that you found on the camouflage pants would appear one time, basically. The, the DNA profile would appear one time. That would be consistent with being included within the mixture. Okay. In light of that statistical frequency, is it consistent that the DNA found on the camouflage pants came from Mark Keith Lloyd? Is that it, it's not necessarily, it, the, the information is a mixture mm -hmm. and uh, his DNA profile is consistent of being, he's included in that mixture. Okay. Showing you what's been marked as States Exhibit 17. Did you also receive a black shirt with the word security on the front of it to analyze? Yes, it did. Did you analyze that item for the presence of DNA? Yes. Again, I took a sample for the wearer of the shirt, and that is typically done uh, around the neck and under the armpits. Okay. Were you able to obtain a DNA profile from the wearer areas of that black security shirt? Uh, again, I found um, a mixture from, uh, from the shirt. Were you able to separate that mixture into a major and a minor contributor? No. Did you compare the DNA you found from the wearer of that shirt to the DNA profile of Markeith Lloyd? No, I was not able to because this mixture was uh, too complex actually to do any comparison, meaning there was too much information in the mixture for me to, re to be uh, confident in assigning any pieces of DNA from the mixture to any specific individual. So basically, he can neither be included or excluded as a contributor because there was just too much information for you to analyze. Correct. Okay. Did you also receive a black knit cap to analyze for the presence of DNA? Sorry. Uh, yes, I did. item I just showed you, I believe, is item 45, already in evidence. Did you analyze that black knit cap for the presence of DNA? Yes, I did. I, again, took a sample for wear, and that is simply just the swabbing of the inside of the knit cap. Okay. Were you able to locate any DNA from that swabbing from the inside of the knit cap? Yes, it was. Okay. What did you find? A mixture was obtained uh, from, this, um, from the hat, and in this case, I was able to um, obtain a complete major contributor to that mixture. And did you compare that complete pro DNA profile of the major contributor from that mixture to the known DNA profile of Mark D. Floyd? Yes, I did. What did you find? Uh, that the uh, major DNA profile matched, matches the DNA profile from Mark Keith Floyd. Okay. And did you do a statistical analysis to give meaning to that for term? I did. Uh, the what, go ahead. I'm sorry, the, the frequency of occurrence of the major DNA profile obtained from exhibit Q18, the hat, for unrelated individuals is r rarer than one in 700 billion. Okay. And you indicated that was a match though to Mark E. Floyd. Correct. Now why is it determined a match? Uh, because it's a, at this point I'm comparing a single source at, to an individual as opposed to a mixture. Okay. And your frequency of occurrence was one in 700 billion? That's correct. All right. Were you able to obtain DNA results from the minor contributor to that mixture? No, I was not. It was so limited that no, no interpretations could be made. Okay. Any one moment, Your Honor? Yes. And at this time, Your Honor, the state would move AM, which is the defendant's DNA or 
DNA standard from Mark Keith Lloyd into evidence as 49, I believe. Yes. No All right, this will be received without objection. It states exhibit number 49. State would move BI, the swab, the DNA swab from the grip of the 40 caliber firearm as 50. No objection. This will be received without objection. It states number 50. And BJ, the swab from the grip of the 9 millimeter as states 51. No objection. This will be received without objection. It states 51. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. I have no Cross. May this witness be excused. State. He is, Your Honor. Defense. Yes. All right. Thank you. You are free thank to you. go, sir. Mm -hmm. Stand. Yeah. Thank you. All right, folks, as I told you, we're going to take care of some other business and send you all to the hotel. It's been a long day for you, a lot of testimony for you to absorb. Have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Anything else we need to address this evening? No, you're right. No, ma'am. All right, we're going to resume at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. As I said, um, testimony to start at 9.30. If I could just see the lawyers informally, but court's in recess. Thank you. <laughs>